Hello everyone, welcome to my refined storage guide. This guide will only contain the basics of refined storage. Uh, second part will be out with the crafting mechanics later. Now when you get down to it, refined storage is a storage mod with added craftability elements to it. Uh, lots of automations can be done with refined storage as well, or thanks to refined storage, I should say. Now there's four basic components that I would say are in refined storage. First one is the brain of the operation, that being the controller. Uh, it's quite an easy craft. It's just a bit of silicon and we'll go over how to get all of these bits later on in the guide. So the controller needs to be powered. It's the only thing in the entire network of refined storage that does need power. And if we look in here, it tells you what everything else costs. So this on its own doesn't cost any FE whatever to like run the entire time. But as you start adding more and more to your network, like this one here, we've got a grid and a disk drive. The grid itself costs two FE per tick. The disk drive costs one FE per tick. And we can have multiple disk drives like this. And you can see it in here. That one costs one that one costs zero if we put more discs in there it does increase the amount of fe that it, it will require right now i'm powering it with a thermoelectric generator this is from immersive engineering uh really really cheap power i've got two of them right here i think it can run off a single one if i'm honest but i put two down just because so that's the brains of the operation we've got the second part which i would say is the storage component of refined storage. So there's two ways you can do storage in refined storage, which is one is disks. So this disk here has got three items in there. Uh, you can see it if you hover over like that. You can also see it in here, there we go. Uh, so each storage disk can contain, well, this one here is a 1K storage disk and it can contain 1000 items. Unlike applied energistics, that 1000 items can be anything. So you can have 1,000 stone swords which have different durabilities on them and it doesn't care. It, it will just take all 1,000 of them. Uh, you can have 1,000 sugarcane and that would fill up this entire disc with just a single type. As I said, there's no types in refined storage. So that's why it's slightly simpler than applied energistics, for example. The other type of storage I will come to later and that involves externally linking up your storage system to another storage system but moving on from there the third and one of the most important i guess is the uh the ui to actually access your items so we can take this out plonk it back in uh you just press shift and there or you hold shift and then you click and then you can just lob stuff in i think it's the same for just regular chests at that point you can also if you hold shift use the scroll wheel to move one item in and out like that. Uh, I think you can do it with all the items as well. So yeah, you can chuck it in, pull it back out, so on and so on. This right here is the uh, the most basic format of looking at your items in your fine storage system, uh, the grid. The grid is used for basically any other way of looking in your refined storage system. So I've got myself a uh, crafting grid. So I'm going to remove this grid right here and you'll see that the disk drive will no longer be connected to the controller right here. So if I eh, see that the light's gone off, that's because that's no longer connected. It needs a physical connection to anything that is connected to it. There is a, a way of wirelessly doing things, but I'll go over that in a later portion of the video. So if we plonk down the crafting grid, that's the exact same can see all of your items except it's got a little crafting table in there and one of the best things that you can do now that we've got a certain amount of items in here you can actually search in JEI so in this case we're going to make a processor which is one of the components needed for refined storage so processor if we look right here we've got the basic processor or the raw basic processor so oh, I'm in creative so I just pulled that one out but this right here is the recipe. As you can see in here, we've got the processor binding, we've got the silicon, we've got the redstone dust, and we've got the iron. 
So if we were to just press here the move items button, it will chuck it in the crafting grid for you, which is really nice. And if we had another iron, for example, there we go, just cheated another iron into there. If you pull this one out like that, it will take the other iron and it will just refill the recipe right there. So you can do multiple at once. These right here do need to be smelted up. So you chuck them in a furnace or any other bulk smelting recipe things that you've got in the pack. We've got create, so we've got this bulk smelting thing right here. But you just smelt them up and you get these basic processors. The recipe for the other two, because there's three in the base refined storage. I do have a couple of add-on mods in this. So if I, oh, that's not it. If I do that, the raw improved processor and the raw advanced processor. So iron, gold, and diamonds are needed. To get the controller itself, you are actually going to need one of these raw processors right here, raw advanced. So if I grab this and we have a look at the recipe again, there's the raw advanced that just comes from smelting this one right here. And uh, you are also going to need some quartz enriched iron, which is another thing added by refined storage. You are going to need some silicon. In this case, it's been ore dictionaried with the applied energistics silicon, but normally you'd have regular silicon in there from refined storage. And with these three items, the quartz enriched iron, the processor binding, and the silicon, everything in this mod is created from those three items pretty much. Now, the last thing on the list, because I did say there was four main components to this, is crafting. Uh, but crafting will be part of this guide at the end because it's the most expansive. So I want to get through the basics and then get to the end and do all of the crafting bits that you could ever want to do. Now, before we move on, I am just going to quickly talk about these things right here, the uh, the storage disks. So right here, we've got a 1K storage disk. So if I type in storage disk, um, as I said, we've got extra disks in, in this pack. So we've got loads more disks. But these four are the ones that are in the base refined storage. So we've got the 1K, the 4K, the 16K, and the 64K. It is most efficient when it comes to resources to try and make yourself a 64K as soon as you can. Because you can in fact have eight 1Ks all just stacked up in here, but eight 1Ks is the same as getting two 4Ks, right? Because one times eight is eight, and two times four is eight as well. And two 4Ks, this is the storage part, which uh, then goes with a housing to create the disc. Two 4Ks actually only require six 1Ks. So as you can see, if you go up and up from here, so from here you go to 16K, which is three 4Ks, three times four is 12. So you're actually getting more bang for your buck going up to the 16. And then again, for the 64K, you need 16 times three, which is less than 64, right? So you're actually getting way more for yourself right there. It takes 27 processors, 1K processors, these ones here, which are just a bit of silicon, bit of glass, redstone, and quartz enriched iron to make a 1K. And it takes 27 overall to get a 64K drive. So you should always be aiming to get a 64K drive. Now, along with the uh, crafting grid that we've got right here, so this is an items interface for refined storage. There's also a fluid interface so the fluid interface is just called the fluid grid and we can stick that down right there. The fluid grid, as you can see, it looks like a regular grid, except it can hold fluids. If you've got a fluid storage device, so uh, we'll come over to connecting up like a draw system and stuff like that later, but you can also connect up tanks, which is very useful, but there's also the disk from refined storage, the fluid storage disk. And we've got a fluid storage disk in there. That's the highest one you can create. It goes, yeah, it's, it's quite, quite a big, big investment right there. But if I was to stick a lava bucket or a shift click, actually we just drop it in like this. 
it will take the lava out of the bucket and put it in the system right here. We can do it with water as well. These don't interact with each other, they're just being stored. And if we have a look in here, that does take up 2,000 because it's a miller bucket per. So as you can see here, we've got 190 individual items stored in this item storage disk. Whereas this one is per miller bucket, which is why the storage disk looks like it's way bigger because it's got 2,000 in there, miller buckets. This is super useful later because that means that you can do some fluid crafting. If something requires a bit of water, and uh, a good example is actually the industrial foregoing dissolution chamber that requires, sometimes it requires like latex and a few bits of items. And you can actually set up some water crafting for that relatively easily using refined storage. Now, moving on from there, we've got the external interactions and internal interactions of refined storage. So the main one, that everyone's probably aware of is uh, you can import and export items from your system. So all an importer does, uh, we've got a drawer right here full of diamonds. So I'm going to stick an importer on there and that will import into our system. Obviously it won't right now because it isn't connected. As I said before, you will need to connect it using a couple of cables from refined storage. You can see that this is going down. The drawer has got 50, 50, 49. Yeah, there we go. And you can see in here that the diamonds are going up. Now, if we didn't want diamonds to be input from here, we could actually, if, oh, I, I got a diamond out of that, thank you. We can actually grab this, uh, this diamond right here and it would not import any diamonds. But for example, if this was a chest, there we go, I've moved it over to a chest. Uh, the import is on the back here. I put a blacklist for the diamond right there. So if I was to stick a diamond in this chest, it's not going to be added to our system, but for example, if I put this chest right here into this other chest, chest section right there, you see it gets pulled in because it doesn't fit the criteria right here. Whitelist and blacklists are very, very useful. Uh, the whitelist one's super useful as well because, for example, if I was to take out this diamond and we put it as just whitelist, and then we get another chest and we stick that one in and we stick this cable in and the fluid grid and these two. The only thing that this can import right now because a whitelist means anything in this can be imported is diamonds. So I can stick that in and it will disappear because it's been sucked into the system. Now the inverse of that is the exporter and unlike the importer, the exporter won't do anything until you give it a filter. So we are going to export ooh, chests. There you go. And there you are. There's a chest in there. If I take that out and we check that back in the system over here, you'll see it goes in and then disappears. And that's because it has ended up in this chest over here. So that's very, very useful as well. Uh, there is an exact mode on this. So if you just wanted to send, I don't know, if we have a sword with, uh, I don't know, a couple of, damage worth of uh, durability on it and we wanted to just send ones that have like a few damage worth you leave it on exact mode but if you didn't want to do that you could put it on not exact mode or exact mode off and then if you put the sword in here it just completely ignores mbt and any durability on that sword and it will send all the swords into here really useful i'll do a little uh, setup of something very simple in a sec uh, but before I do, let's talk about the external storage. So what an external storage is, it's pretty much the same recipe as an importer and an exporter. So an importer requires a gold processor, as we talked about earlier, and a destruction core, which is just a basic one with a, uh, a nether quartz. The exporter is the same recipe, except it's a construction core which instead of the nether quartz, you get some glowstone dust and put it on there. But what the external storage does is it allows you to connect up. So if we were to remove this, for example, and we stick an external storage on there, the external storage is just by default set up to allow you to access, that is pull out and push back into any 
external storage that you have. It's kind of in the name. So, for example, if we look in here, there's no chests right now. If I stick some chests in there, we can have a look. There they are. You can also pull out of here, and it's gone from the chest over here. So these are really useful. I'll give you a more real-world example of what people tend to do with their external storages, and that is we've got a storage controller from Functional Storage. Uh, the other draw mod has also got this, so that's storage drawers. But with the storage controller, we can link up all of these things. And this becomes the de facto sort of, you know, the, the head honcho of all of these drawers. So if we had some, uh, let, let, let's go grab our diamonds from over here. And we've got 64 diamonds right there. We can right click on here and they'll show up in the drawers right there. Uh, if I get rid of this cable right here and plonk on there an external storage like that, you see we've got 64 diamonds, redstone, yeah, all of those things. You can now see them in the grid right here because that is technically part of the refined storage network right now. So what people tend to do is set up a ton of these drawers. These drawers can be like upgraded so they hold max int of a certain item and then they import into the drawer via either the storage controller or they just pump into the drawer itself and then yeah you've just got access over here which is amazing uh, apparently we had 64 redstone right there already in the in the disk which i think was correct so you see we've got 64 right there if i take 64 out you can shift click on an item and it will bring out 64 of that certain item. This, I think right now, has got a higher priority than the disc. So if we look in the disc, there's still 190 items stored. But over here, there's none, none stored in the drawer. If we were to take that out again, that has gone down by 60, because that's how many we have here. So that's 130. But now, if we were to put these back in, so if I put this 60 back in, we have a look over here, it's gone into the drawer instead. We can stick the rest of it in there, it's still gone into the drawer. So priority is a big factor in these sort of things. People normally tend to, and by people I mean myself, I tend to put the priority on this to like 100. You can have several drawer systems set up, but yeah, if you set it to 100, that means it will always try and go into the drawer if it can get in there. So do we have any cobble in our system? We don't. Let's get some cobble. So right there's some cobble. Uh, if we were to put it in right now, there you go, went over here. You can also do the inverse. So if you don't want it to go into the drawers, you can set it to minus one, set. And now if we get some cobblestone again, so we've got cobble right there. If I was to put this in the system, you'll see it hasn't gone into the drawers. It's actually gone into the storage disk because this has got a priority higher than the priority of the external storage. There is a priority on the disk drive as well. So you can set the priority of this to minus one. And I think that's what most people tend to do as well. So you set the priority to minus one on that one. You set the priority of this one to 100. And that way... Everything doesn't fill up your disks. It will try and go into your drawer system or even if you've got like a huge chest. I think uh, there's like another mod which adds like massive chest, colossal chest, I think it's called. Really cool mod, but you can connect it up using an external storage and you can set it to be the main system of like storing stuff. And if that fills up for some reason, then it will start going into disks. So right now, if we were to import anything, it would probably go over here. If, for example, if we get some, I don't know, blackstone, let's grab some, actually, let's get some cobble deep slate. And if we grab this and we stick it over here and we push that in, it can't go in over here. So it will try and go into the next priority, which is the disc. In fact, it won't go in there because it will go in the chest because this is a higher priority than the disc up here. That's enough about priorities. Uh, I've, there's one last thing that I want to talk about with the external storage, and that is uh, it can also be done on 
for example, we've got a tank here from Mechanism. And if you were to shift click that on the tank, the external storage, it won't do anything because you can't store items in this, but there is a button in here for fluids. So there's a type up here. And if you stick it to fluids and you set that to a high priority, so let's set that to uh, priority five, there we go. And if we get ourselves a bucket of lava, for example, if we were to put the bucket of lava in here like that, you see it goes in normally, you'd think it go in the disc up here, but you see it's still got two. So that's the one bucket of lava and one bucket of water we've already put in. And the rest of it went straight into the fluid tank right here. So that is one way, obviously in this situation, you can't really uh, put more than one fluid in this. So if you were to get some more water and put it in the fluid grid, it would try and go in here. It can't because this can only accept one fluid and it would go into the disc instead. Again, I'll give you a real world example of this, which is quite useful. Let's uh, stick a sink from Cooking for Blockheads down. This, uh, if you've been playing modded Minecraft, you'll know. This is a infinite water source right there. And you can stick an external storage on that. Stick it on the fluid mode. Uh, also, you will probably want to set this, this icon down here to something else. So insert and extract. You want to put that on extract only. There is a bit of a, an issue with the, the sink from cooking from, for blockheads right there because uh, this can actually accept all types of fluids. You can put like a bucket of lava in there if you wanted and it would just be like, yeah, whatever, and it will void it. So always remember that if you're using a sink right here with an external storage to get infinite water that it will <laughs> unfortunately void off anything. But what this does is it means that it can only extract from this. It can't, I think you can do it on this as well. So we can do extract only, or you could do insert only, which means it will put lava in here, but you can't take the lava back out. And it's the same for this. It will take out the water, but you can't put water back in. This is infinite anyway. So that means that, you know, you're not going to be wanting to put your water back in the three Last items I'll quickly mention right now are the constructor, destructor, and detector. So the destructor, which is this one here, if we, uh, let's grab one of these deep slate cobbles and I'll stick it right there. If we aim this right at that, the destructor will just get rid of the deep slate cobble and it will pull it into the system. It's kind of like a block breaker from back in the day. So if you were to set up a infinite uh, cobble gen or something like that in front of this. This would just destroy the cobble, bring it into the system, destroy the cobble, bring it into the system. Yeah, it's pretty decent like that. Uh, if I was to put this one down, just so I have something to place the constructor, which is like the the sister to the, uh, the destructor right there. This one, again, is a bit like the exporter where it doesn't do anything until you give it something to put in there. So we're gonna put in a piece of deep slate cobble and it will pull it from the system and push it out and place it in front of it. Right now we don't have any in the system, so it's not gonna place, but if we were to chuck one in the system, there you go, it's gonna place it out. These can actually be used in conjunction with each other using some upgrades, which we will go over later. The last one on my list is the detector. So I'm gonna show you again, a real world example, because why not? We've got an exporter, which doesn't have anything in it right now. I'm going to set this over here, the redstone mode, which all of these seem to have a redstone mode. Uh, but what you can do with this is set it so it will only export whatever you put in here when it's got a redstone signal. So we're going to put in some cobblestone like that. And that's not going to start exporting at all because it doesn't have a redstone signal right now. If we were to get a lever or lever, however you want to say it, and stick it down next to it and flip it on, this would get a redstone signal, meaning it would start exporting. So what the detector does, as long as it's hooked up to the system, we are going to put a piece of cobble in here. And you can set this to be like, ooh, I don't know, let's say if it's got more than, or let's say less than 100, like that. So 
Emit a signal when above the amount. Emit a signal when below the amount. Okay, we want above the amount. So that is emitting a, a redstone signal when we've got more than 100 cobblestone in our system. So you can see right here, if we were to place this one in here, so right now it's turned off because we've got exactly 100. If I was to place this one cobble in there, you uh, keep an eye down here. So I'm going to shift click that one in. You'll see this turn on, which will turn on the exporter and export one cobblestone into the chest. In fact, before we do that, I'll show you there's 27 in there now. And then we lob that one in. You see that it turned on. And then that turned on the exporter, which pushed out into here. These are really useful for a few operations. And in fact, I will be using them in my All The Mod Star guide. Now, I'm just going to set up a furnace. So it is half automated. I say half because you can set this up with a crafter, which we will be getting into very soon. I know a lot of you are probably like, where's the crafter right now? But uh, a furnace is sided. So it's a really good example of this. Uh, the back of a furnace, I think the sides as well, and maybe the front, you can pipe in some like burnable material. So in this case, coal, we're going to use coal. So if I stick an exporter right there and tell it to export coal, you'll see nothing is going in any of the sides of the furnace. But if I chuck some coal in the system, let's put like three stacks of coal. There you go. It's being pushed into the furnace right there. Uh, we need to get underneath. So I'm going to get underneath like this. The bottom of a furnace is where you import into the system. So I am going to need some cable to link this up to the system like that. Uh, let's cover that up because make it less ugly. Perfect. Now that that is full up, let's put something that you can burn into this. You can furnace up. So uh, iron, for example, we can take a raw iron like this. We can stick it in the furnace. That is going to be smelted up. And if we give it a sec, it will get over here. And then it disappears because that has gone into our system right there. There's 65. It used to be 60. There's the, there's the extra iron we've got right there. So that's a small automation you can do. You can set up automated furnaces, which when you put items in there, they will be instantly extracted into your system once they've finish burning so we can get a stack of raw iron and we can lob it in there and that is going to be pulled out once that is finished so if we just wait for this last one to be smelted right here there it is iron and that just went up by one so that's the basics of refined storage without any crafting mechanics i am going to release a second part to this where i go over all the crafting that you can do plus go over some of the upgrades you can put in each of the external slash internal components so thank you for watching thanks for joining and uh, i will see you in the next one bye